In almost every single card game, randomness is one of the core aspects of it. The inherent nature of drawing a card from your deck is completely random. And compared to the most popular card game, Magic the Gathering, one other card game decides to take randomness to a completely different level. And that game is Hearthstone. Since Hearthstone was built as a video game rather than the traditional paper method, they could use randomness in completely new ways. You might ask yourself, why would Hearthstone want to make their game more random? And it comes down to one simple but very important concept, dynamic replayability, also known as replay value. The idea that each game is going to play out slightly different because of additional randomness makes players not get bored as quickly, meaning that the game has a longer lifespan. Magic the Gathering has dynamic replayability in the form of lands. Because magic does not have a guaranteed mana resource, the variance of drawing lands from your deck adds that additional randomness. But in Hearthstone, you do get one mana per turn, which means they have to do randomness in a completely different way. And because Hearthstone is on a digital space, they decided to use randomness as a way to introduce a casual audience to collectible card games. And this was a very smart idea, but sometimes they went a little bit too far and randomness broke the game. The thing about Hearthstone is that randomness is done in multiple ways. The four types of randomness that are introduced in Hearthstone are targeting, functionality, in-class generation, and wide generation. Let's start off with functionality. While this is one of the worst types of RNG in the game, it is not commonly done as much as it used to. As the game has gotten older, the developers have learned from their consequences. Now there is still some functionality RNG, they just released a new card called Conqueror's Banner, but it's not nearly as game-breaking as it used to be. When this type of RNG is added to a Hearthstone card, often the cards either do something or absolutely nothing, not really anything in between. Crackle and Implosion are really good examples of this. Sometimes the card will do a lot of damage, other times it won't do enough, and it's completely out of your control. There's also card draw examples like Fungal Fortunes or Book of Spectres, but at least there is some agency for deck building when it comes to cards like this. There was a card called Lightning Storm in Hearthstone Classic that did two to three damage randomly to your opponent's minions. And Blizzard recently decided to buff this card so it did a flat three damage, but you could see that this type of RNG is not great for a game. There is definitely not a lot of upside with randomness like this. It doesn't feel more skillful to high roll, and at least someone in any game is upset whenever something like this happens. This doesn't really break the game, but it honestly breaks your spirit to play it. They also had an expansion where they built a mechanic around this type of RNG called Called Joust, which was basically both players drew a card from their deck, and if your card costs more mana, then it'd have an additional benefit. But if you lost, your card did absolutely nothing. And this definitely was not a great mechanic to introduce into the game because it often felt like your cards were useless when you tried to joust with them. The next type of randomness is generation. In the modern era of Hearthstone, players often point to generation when they think of RNG Fiesta. This can be done through many different ways, like puzzle boxes of Yogg Saron discovering a card to just randomly generating an answer. This is all done through generation. But this isn't something new to Hearthstone. This has been around in the game since their very first expansion where they introduced cards like Unstable Portal and Piloted Shredder. But the issue with this type of randomness is when it's the most efficient thing to do. When it comes to randomness in Hearthstone, it should be mainly goofy and terrible. A great example of this is a card like Prince Malkazar. Whenever you see him at the start of the game, you know that your favorite since five random legendaries in your deck are probably garbage. There's also a lot of really bad cards that had random generation effects over the years that just never saw play because they were never worth running. Whenever a generation card is efficient and random, people often freak out, which they rightfully should. However, you have to remember that most people love this stuff, especially the casual player base. One of the most popular cards of all time is yogg Saron, a card that cast a random spell for each spell you cast this game. People were absolutely loving this card when it was first released, Unfortunately for Yogg, it was found out to be very powerful, it was brought to competitive events, and people lost money because of this card. Generation can be split up in two different types. There is in-class generation and wide generation. The Discover mechanic is basically the poster child for this. When Discover was first introduced in League of Explorers, it was extremely popular, and everyone called it a good kind of randomness. It was weighted towards class cards, so it didn't have the unstable portal problem, and it was competitively 
slightly costed, but not overpowered. However, an effect like Discover can very easily become too good. And Hearthstone used to have the issue of Discover cards discovering themselves, which can lead to incredible RNG chains. One of the best examples of this is a card called Renew, which basically allowed the class to full heal themselves while constantly discovering a new version of the card. It was pretty ridiculous and most importantly led to very unfun gameplay. Generation into more generation is often where most of the saltiness can happen. When a card is discovered and you can deduce what card it could possibly be, it could be pretty fun to play with. But when you're playing around a bunch of generated cards and you have no idea what you're playing against, it could lead to really unfun gameplay. But Discover is not the only form of generation. There are cards like Mana Cyclone, a card that was competitively viable and could generate a lot of very good cards consistently. And when generation happens consistently, it becomes really hard to feel like you had any control over the outcome in the game, and that could lead to a horrible play pattern in Hearthstone. There's also multiple other forms of generation in Hearthstone, for example, the res effect in the priest class, but the generation of this doesn't feel unwarranted, and even though they are generating cards out of thin air, it doesn't feel like they're completely random. You know what you're going to be playing against. We then move on to wide generation, and if you've ever seen a Trollden video before, this is basically where Hearthstone gets really ridiculous. Most of the time, wide generation leads to interactions that were not intended for most classes. Cheater! This is where a lot of the real outliers in Hearthstone history lie. Cards like Unstable Portal is a really good example of wide generation. It isn't only about spells. A card like Piloted Shredder was the first really efficient wide generation tool that we've seen in Hearthstone. Depending on what minion summoned from the Piloted Shredder can often be the difference of you winning or losing the game, and it felt really bad to play against. But it was so powerful that you were basically forced to put it in every mid-range deck. When Y generation is pushed intentionally to have a higher power level, you end up with a card like Dragon Queen Alex Straza, which was often referred as Scam Queen Alex Straza because this type of card could just scam you out of a victory. Obviously, Yogg Saron fits in here as well. It generated a ton of random cards outside of your class and led to a ridiculous board state. Quite recently, Hearthstone decided to try dual class cards, which allowed the rogue class to discover mage cards, which led to ridiculous situations. Why generation effects can lead to a lot of very goofy games, and most of the time they're quite fun. In Hearthstone Classic, there was a card called Thought Steal, which a lot of people wanted to be good because the card was just really fun. But when the effects of wide generation are way too efficient, it leads to a lot of salty moments for Hearthstone players. Regardless of how it can make players feel, this type of generation is extremely popular. People love breaking down what a class can do and seeing what happens when a class is not supposed to work in a particular way or gets a brand new interaction that they're not supposed to have. And this has been in Hearthstone for an extremely long period of time. All the way back in Classic, like I mentioned, there was Thought Steal. And many players would say that this is the worst kind of RNG, but that's not necessarily true if it's done well. Since why generation breaks the game on purpose and breaking the game is fun, when it isn't the most efficient thing to do, it's not horrible for the game. The issue with why generation is when it becomes the best way to win a game of Hearthstone. No one wants to lose to complete nonsense. It leaves one player feeling absolutely horrible, and it can actually just break the game. However, moments that why generation creates are necessary for the game's continued success. It's the reason why Hearthstone has been very successful. Yogg Saron is a perfect example of this, and this is what makes Hearthstone Hearthstone. But you're probably wondering about the fourth type of RNG, and this type of randomness has been pervasive throughout Hearthstone now that it's always been here. Random targeting. This type of randomness is really close to just drawing the right cards, but it's also tied to functionality in terms of does my card work or not. The biggest difference here is that there is a presence of a high roll as opposed to functionality where the card often starts at the best case and can only get worse. This has been around since Hearthstone Classic, Ragnaros, Sylvanas, Mind Control Tech, Knife Juggler, but it's also been introduced in ways that are not immediately obvious. A keyword known as Recruit is a huge source of targeting frustration. Before the keyword even existed, there was a card called Barnes. Barnes was one of the most hated cards in Hearthstone because the range of outcomes was absolutely ginormous, even if you built a deck to take advantage of them. There's also onboard damage too. Cards like Knife Juggler stand out, but there's also cards like Flame Juggler and Fiery Bat that one point of damage can decide the outcome of a game. And with enough density of targeting RNG, it often comes down to just winning a bunch of flips in order for you to win a game. One of the classic board removals brawl is a huge form of targeting. Sometimes you're going to absolutely high roll and sometimes you're just going to lose a game because of it. But this is the most fun 
fundamental part of Hearthstone that we've discussed so far. And it circles back to dynamic replayability. And this type of RNG isn't inherently problematic, but can be tuned to be problematic when a single role decides a game. What players want is to feel agency. If a single role is too powerful, it feels like the other decisions in the game didn't matter. And that was a problem very early on in Hearthstone with cards like MC Tech or Ragnaros. The way that they have addressed this has improved with varying ways to make your cards do what you want with little work. A card like Fel Barrage looks inherently random, but you can actually have some degree of agency before you play the card. And of course, there's value in your cards doing what you want, but you need random effects for the game to feel distinct. As much as randomness can kill Hearthstone, we've actually seen the polar opposite of if there's no randomness in the game. During the Year of the Raven, they introduced two cards known as Gen and Baku, and those two cards were completely not random. There was no variance at all outside of the matchup you faced. And these two cards were Hall of Famed early because the play pattern against them was getting very tiresome and players were leaving the game left and right. But when you're only random in a game is before the first turn, that feeling of agency is completely gone outside of an informed deck selection. And even worse, the games are not dynamic. You press the buttons and see what happens and it's probably the same thing that happened last time you faced that deck. A game based around emergent interactions cannot survive when gameplay is too predictable. But players cannot feel satisfied with their perceived control over a game when random effects are too prevalent and too efficient. As always, the answer lies somewhere in the middle. Give players some control, but give players some wackiness as well. Let them have efficient cards, but make sure the games also feel whimsical and surprising. You want your game to be screenshot worthy while making pro players feel like they have agency over each matchup and their decision. Is this an easy thing for a Hearthstone developer to do? Absolutely not. And they're constantly being pulled between the casual and competitive audience of the game, which is why we see cards like Rune of the Archmage and multi-strike being printed in the same set. We want randomness to be in Hearthstone, but we also want cards that give agency so both players can be happy. To sum this whole video up, RNG can break Hearthstone, but it can also be its best friend. It's a very tough balancing act for a card game to do, but that's what Hearthstone is.